Picture this. A single Chinese aircraft, not some futuristic concept from a sci-fi movie, but a real machine, loiters 40,000 feet above the vast expanse of the Pacific. This isn't just any plane. It's a flying brain, beaming encrypted data to a swarm of drones. Then, in real time, it retargets a destroyer's missiles with pinpoint precision. And somehow, in this incredible hub of technology, there's still room for a coffee pot. That bird isn't science fiction. It's the Y-20, converted into an aerial command center, and Beijing only needs a handful of them to turn the entire Indo-Pacific chessboard upside down. This isn't about simply adding another piece to the game, it's about fundamentally changing the rules. Stick around, because in the next few minutes you'll learn exactly how a cargo hold big enough for three tanks is being rewired and reimagined to become China's ultimate flying brain. For decades, airborne command posts came in just two main flavors, big, loud, and American. Think the iconic E-4B Nightwatch, often dubbed, the Doomsday Plane, or Russian, reliable in their own way, but increasingly rare and aging. China watched, learned, and meticulously spotted a glaring gap in this aerial command landscape. The People's Liberation Army's problem isn't just about advanced tech. It's rooted in simple, undeniable geography. 14 land neighbors, vast, contested seas stretching across its east and south, and supply lines that have to snake 6,000 kilometers before they even reach the Indian Ocean. Coordinating fighters, tankers, satellites, and submarines across that sprawling, complex theater from ground bunkers is like trying to run Netflix through a 1990s dial-up modem. It's slow, inefficient, and prone to bottlenecks. A high-endurance, high-bandwidth flying headquarters, however, cuts through that bottleneck in one decisive move, offering unparalleled flexibility and speed in decision-making. It's not just a convenience, it's an operational imperative in modern warfare. The base Y-20, already an impressive beast, is nicknamed, Chubby Girl, for a reason. It can haul a staggering 66 tons over 7,800 kilometers, take off from a mere 600 meters of semi-prepared runway, and climb to a dizzying 13,000 meters. This isn't just brute strength, this robust airframe gives engineers an incredible 4-meter high, 20-meter long workspace. That's enough volume to stack four E3 sentry cabins sideways. Imagine the possibilities. Inside, the floor isn't fixed. It's modular, a truly smart design choice. Racks roll in and out almost as easily as IKEA shelves, allowing for rapid reconfiguration. The standard layout now includes 20 operator consoles, each a nerve center for mission control, three satellite router racks ensuring seamless global connectivity, and two diesel auxiliary power units for independent operation. There's even a crypto vault, because secure communications are paramount, and yes, a tiny galley, because even wars still run on caffeine and quick meals. The air conditioning system, often an afterthought, is upsized by a full 40%. Electronics hate heat, and the Y-20 is expected to stay airborne for 12 hours without any tanker help, demanding robust cooling. This isn't just a transport plane anymore, it's a meticulously designed, self-sufficient command platform. Let's talk about the numbers, because they really tell the story of what this aircraft can do. Crew. Three on the flight deck, plus a mission crew of 12 to 18 specialists, depending on the specific role. That's a lot of brainpower in the sky. Range. A ferry range of 10,000 kilometers means it can reach almost anywhere on the planet with a reduced payload, while still managing 7,800 kilometers with its full 66-ton cargo. That's impressive global reach. Speed. A cruise speed of Mach 0.75, or about 926 kilometers per hour, lets it get to the action quickly and efficiently. Power. Four homemade WS-20 turbofans, each kicking out a powerful 14 tons of thrust. This isn't just about raw power, it's about China's growing self-reliance in critical aviation technology. Antennas. A prominent dorsal SATCOM dome ensures broadband satellite communication, while cheap mounted phased array panels handle line of sight Link 16 style networks. Plus, there's a ventral EW fairing, ready for either jamming enemy communications or discreetly listening in. Defensive Suite. 
Equipped with missile approach warners, deployable towed decoys, and optional directed infrared countermeasures, it's designed to protect itself. Translation? This isn't just a big, slow target. It can outrun a Boeing 747, outloiter A, C-130 Hercules, and still self-protect against most heat-seeking missiles. It's a formidable presence in the sky, designed for survival and sustained operations. China's earlier KJ-2000, a workhorse in its own right, used an IL-76 body stuffed with radar. But talking to distant ships or ground units often meant bouncing signals through slow, vulnerable ground relays. The Y-20 Command variant completely flips that script. It boasts advanced Ka-band and Ku-band SATCOM systems that hook directly into the new Guowang Broadband Satellite Constellation. We're talking a data rate of 300 megabits per second, that's more than enough for real-time 4K drone footage streaming seamlessly, or for a rapid burst of fire control data to a distant Type 055 destroyer. For closer range interactions, line-of-sight links run on a domestic TDMA waveform, affectionately nicknamed, Shin-11. This provides a robust 2 megabits to fighters within a 300 kilometers radius, ensuring tactical coordination. The net result is astounding. A single Y-20 can orchestrate over 200 platforms simultaneously, including drones, without ever needing to reveal its home base frequencies. This level of integrated, secure, and distributed command and control is a game-changer, allowing for dynamic, fluid operations that are incredibly difficult for an adversary to counter. Let's compare it to the US Air Force E-4B, often seen as the gold standard for airborne command. The American jet is certainly bigger and older, primarily built to keep the president and the chain of command alive during a nuclear conflict. The Y-20, however, is smaller, significantly cheaper, and purpose-built for distributed combat operations in a contested environment. An E-4B costs a hefty $220 million per copy, plus an eye-watering $400,000 per flight hour. A Y-20 command variant, rolling off the same Xi'an production line as the standard transport, is a different story. Insiders pegged the sticker price at roughly $180 million, with hourly costs around $60,000. What does that translate to? China can buy four Y-20 command centers for every one E-4B the US fields, and still have cash left over for spare parts and maintenance. This cost-effectiveness allows for a far more distributed and resilient command structure. The closest peer outside of the US might be Russia's IL-80, but even that platform relies heavily on exportable commercial electronics. The Y-20's backbone, in stark contrast, is China's first fully indigenous 28 nanometer avionics stack. This means sanction-proof production, giving China a critical strategic advantage. They can build and maintain these vital assets without fear of foreign parts embargoes or technological dependencies. That's a major reason why the West is paying very close attention. Yes, this aircraft can coordinate complex airstrikes with precision, but Chinese planners weren't content to stop there. They squeezed in some truly innovative extra tricks. The belly of the Y-20 holds four two-ton palletized detachments, meaning its role can be radically transformed in a matter of hours. Swap one pallet, and you've got a sophisticated signals intelligence cell, ready to hoover up enemy communications. Swap another, and it becomes a powerful electronic countermeasures shop, capable of pumping out 80 kilowatts of noise to jam adversary radar and comms. Or, leave them all out, and you still have 40 cubic meters of cargo space, so on Monday, it could be a tanker, Tuesday it's evacuating citizens from a crisis zone, and Wednesday it's a full-fledged battle staff headquarters. This incredible adaptability is thanks to modular power rails, Marink 429 data buses, and fiber optic networks, which make re-rolling the aircraft's mission in just 24 hours possible, not weeks. PLA watchers have a fitting nickname for this capability, one airframe, five faces. That kind of flexibility is precisely why the Pentagon's latest China report lists this Y-20 variant as the fastest emerging and most concerning gap in American kill chain calculus. It's a truly multi-role platform that challenges traditional military planning. So, where can we expect to see these aerial command centers making their presence felt? Expect orbits over the South China Sea first, that's almost a given. Loops of 1,000 kilometers west of Luzon will give its radar clear sightlines to key strategic locations like Manila, 
Vietnam's Cam Ranh Bay, and the hotly contested Spratly Islands. From such a vantage point, a Y-20 can hand precise targeting cues to shore-based DF-21D anti-ship ballistic missile batteries, effectively turning the entire sea into a no-sail zone for any aircraft carriers that dare to wander inside the first island chain. It's a powerful deterrent. The second hotspot? The Tibetan Plateau. At high-altitude strips like Shigat Sea, the Y-20 needs only 70% thrust to lift 50 tons, a testament to its robust performance in thin air. Loitering at 35,000 feet, it can link forward airstrip radars to satellites, effectively knitting together India's entire northern frontier into a cohesive, real-time picture. And finally, don't be surprised to see them in UN peacekeeping missions. China now provides the largest troop contingent among the P-5 nations, and an airborne command post allows those troops to operate effectively in African theaters where communications infrastructure is often patchy. This not only scores Beijing significant diplomatic points but also provides invaluable real-world testing for its cutting-edge gear in live fire conditions. It's a strategic asset with global reach and multiple applications. Now, let's be clear. No aircraft is invincible, and the Y-20 Command variant certainly has its vulnerabilities. Those prominent twin SATCOM domes, while critical for communication, are essentially microwave ovens for radar emissions. A stealth drone equipped with side-looking AESA radar could potentially map those emission patterns and cue a long-range missile for a precision strike. Then there are the engines. The WS-20 turbofans are new, and as with any nascent technology, early production batches still show blade coating inconsistencies. This means the mean time between overhauls is currently only 1,200 hours, half of Western standards. That translates to more frequent maintenance and potentially lower operational availability. And while the airframe itself is proudly Chinese, some critical ball bearing packs and electrohydraulic valves still come from dual use European suppliers. In a heightened geopolitical scenario, sanctions could easily tighten that spigot, creating significant logistical headaches for Beijing. Finally, let's not forget the human element pilot workload. Glass cockpit or not, 18-hour missions demand incredible endurance. This means needing four full crews per sortie cycle, and the PLA is only now writing the comprehensive training syllabus for this demanding operational tempo. It's a complex undertaking that requires significant investment in human capital. So, what's on the horizon for this burgeoning aerial powerhouse? Satellite images from last December have already shown a second Y-20 command prototype, this one sporting dorsal conformal fuel tanks. That's a big deal, as it suggests the aircraft's range could jump by another 1,500 kilometers, further extending its global reach. And the rumor mill is buzzing. A third airframe is reportedly testing a fiber laser IR countermeasure, rated at a powerful 50 kilowatts. That's enough energy to potentially fry incoming manpads, man portable air defense systems, seekers from 5 kilometers away, significantly enhancing its self-protection capabilities. While the exact production cadence is classified, we know the Xi'an plant is already pumping out one basic Y-20 transport every six weeks. If Beijing earmarks just 20% of that production line for these specialized command variants, you're looking at three new flying headquarters entering service every year. By 2030, the PLA could realistically keep five of these aircraft continuously airborne, perhaps one over the Pacific, one over the Indian Ocean, one deployed to Africa, and two rotating through maintenance. This would effectively mirror the U.S. Air Force's own doomsday posture, but at a fraction of America's budget. It's a truly cost-effective way to project power and maintain continuous command and control globally. If you found these details as fascinating and eye-opening as we did, then please, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss our next deep dive where we'll explore China's rapidly expanding undersea surveillance network. And hey, we'd love to hear from you. Drop a comment below. Do you think 5Y20 command posts are enough to truly shift the global balance of power, or does the West still hold the high-tech edge? And definitely share this with that friend who still thinks the Y20 is just a cargo truck with wings. They'll thank you for it. So, it's clear the Y-20 Aerial Command Center isn't just another transport plane with a few radios bolted on. It is, quite literally, China's ambitious attempt to compress an entire carrier strike group's decision loop into one single, powerful fuselage. 
It gives Beijing a movable patch of sky where information flows faster than adversaries can jam it, where drones become its eyes, missiles become its voices, and vast distances shrink to a mere data packet. Whether that prospect scares you or leaves you impressed by the sheer ingenuity, one thing is abundantly clear. The next war's center of gravity just grew wings, and it's painted in the distinctive red and gold roundels of the PLA.